The Barrio Analco, when and where was it established? The Barrio Analco was established in Santa Fe at the early part of the 17th century. Now, we don't exactly know an exact date, precisely because most of the documents, or all of the documents, of the early settlement of Santa Fe and New Mexico were destroyed in the Pueblo Revolt. So we don't have 16th century and 17th century documents that were archived in Santa Fe. There were documents that are archived in Spain, so you can piece together some things, but for the most part, um, the documentation has been scarce. So the thinking is that um, the barrio was, was established sort of simultaneously with the Villa, the Santa Fe, which was in 1609-1610. And who were the people who first moved into the barrio or who constituted the barrio? So the barrio was, a, was a, an actual district or neighborhood barrio, was, means neighborhood in Spanish, which was set aside for the Mexican Indians who accompanied uh, Oñate, uh, as, as well as Pedro de Peralta and other explorers and adventurers who came into the colony in the early 17th century and throughout the 17th century, actually. These are the Tlaxcalan Indians from Mexico. Why did they come up with the Spanish? Well, that's a, a big uh, point of debate. Um, the Tlaxcalans have been the beneficiaries of this great legend in, in New Mexico and in Santa Fe, um, that they were a formal group that established the Barrio Analco. Um, historians over time have, have come to find out that actually that probably is not the case. Okay. There may have been a few Tlaxcalans in New Mexico, uh, but most likely it was other Nahua, Nahuatl-speaking tribes uh, from, from indigenous Mexico uh, that came with the conquerors into New Mexico over time, but not as one group of Tlaxcalans. Mm. That's where the legend lies. And that actually goes back to the colonial period. The Tlaxcalans were very instrumental in helping um, Cortez conquer the Aztecs. As, and they became Christianized. They became a very privileged group within colonial Mexican society or colonial Spanish society. And they were afforded many privileges. Uh, they got to ride horses, carry weapons, uh, they had their laws. They occupied a privileged position because they'd helped Cortez defeat the Aztecs. Yes, they had a higher status among the indigenous peoples in, in Mexico at the time of the conquest. So the thinking in, in New Mexican, among New Mexican scholars is that over time, scholars just thought, well, there was a group of Indians who settled in the Barrio Analco. It must have been Tlaxcalans mm. because the Tlaxcalans helped with the settlement of other parts of New Spain. Uh, there's a, been a lot of research done over many decades, most of which has served to debunk that theory. Um, I read something just recently by a, a woman named Elizabeth Oster who is uh, proposing that actually a group of Kashkans, who were the northernmost Mesoamericans and the northernmost uh, Nahuatl-speaking uh, indigenous group in Mexico, that probably were one among the predominant group that came to Santa Fe and settled in the Barrio Analco. Oh, it's interesting. So, Along with others, it, okay. it was it was a, it was a dispersed group of or a disparate group of many uh, diverse indigenous ethnicities, many of whom had the Nahuatl language in common. And we know it was Nahua speaking because the word Analco comes from the Nahuatl language. And it literally means uh, the other side of the river. So the Barrio Analco was on the other side of the river, the sort of away from the of the Santa Fe, Fe River, yes, okay. as a separate group from the, the Spanish, which who were in the center of the Villa with the palace of the governors and the and the churches, the parochia, etc. You grew up in this area. Tell us about the place and the people. Well, I grew up in Santa Fe. I, I grew up in sort of the modern 50s subdivision called Casa Solana, uh, but it's a, you know just a stone's throw from the Barrio Analco. Um, but my father grew up in the Barrio Analco, and many of his ancestors were had lived there. My aunt actually still lives in the Barrio Analco on East of Argus Street, a um, little slice of East of Argus Street behind Canyon Road. Um, when I was growing up, what I knew of the Barrio Analco was, was the legend that Tlaxcalans had settled there. Um, I knew it as a place where the pink adobe was, you know, a very, mm -hmm. very popular 
still gathering place today, a restaurant, as a place where St. Michael's High School used to be, which is where my brothers attended school. Um, and so it was really just part of downtown Santa Fe, more of a tourist destination um, than a historical center in the way that I grew up understanding it. Why is it important to know about the Barrio Analco and celebrate it today? Well, the Barrio Analco is really interesting because it, it really is a touchstone for so many layers of New Mexico history, um, as well as mythology and mystery, because there's still a lot of mystery behind it. Um, there's so many unanswered questions regarding the, the residents who lived there um, and how they interacted with the Spaniards and what kind of uh, how they benefited the development of the colony. Um, but over time, there was all of this diverse mix of, of peoples who have come through New Mexico who had some role in the Barrio Analco um, that is still very important today. The San Miguel Chapel was built for the Mexican Indians that lived in the Barrio Analco. Well, my father used to tell me that it was it was haunted, that some of those buildings were built over a, a graveyard, apparently. And my great-grandfather, he told me, was buried there. And he used to say that when they were little, they used to go into that area, and there were all kinds of spirits there. How did they feel about the fact that there were buildings built over the graveyard? Well, I think it was a sign of progress, considered a sign of progress. So many of the things that happened in Santa Fe over time, because it was such a poor community, when things got developed, when a street got paved, it was considered progress. It was considered, you know, maybe something that was going to help the city stay alive. Uh, at least that's the way that my father always talked about it. Um, and certainly, you know, it's, it's, it is a desecration. My mother went um, to Loretto Academy, which was just on the other side of the river from the Badio. Um, and I always found that was such an interesting dynamic, that, that there was a world on that side of the river and a world on this side of the river. And certainly uh, where the neighborhood where my father grew up, he, he always talked about how it was such a poor neighborhood. Um, his right be behind Canyon Road. And now you look at, at that area, yeah. and it's some part of the wealthiest part of Santa Fe. Um, my dad used to always tell me also there was this, this restaurant that opened up kind of where near the Pink Adobe is now, um, and you could buy hamburgers for a nickel. So his mother would send him over for a with a dollar, and he'd get 20 hamburgers for the whole family. My father always talked about uh, learning to swim in the Santa Fe River. You know, they would dam it up at the at the bridge area there. So it was a, a real a place of 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 local business, local community, um, all of these different things interacting with the development of Santa Fe as a tourist destination. How does the Barrio change our understanding of New Mexico culture and identity? Well, you know, we, especially in Santa Fe, I think more than anywhere else, have grown up with the mythologies of three cultures, only three cultures living together, um, a Spanish, legacy that never, and lineage that never got intersected with other ethnicities. And of course the Barrio Nalco debunks that immediately because it was home to Mexican Indians and other indigenous peoples uh, from New Mexico and North America as well. So it really makes for a more complex story and a more interesting story. And I like to think that you know, growing up, I, I heard so much of the mythology, and it gave me a real pride and sense of place. And I believed in that mythology because that's what I was raised to understand. But as I got older and I and I started to to work in areas of journalism and and, and researching history and reading incredible scholars who have done this research through time, I realized that the pride in place becomes stronger when you realize that the complexity was even more more than we ever imagined, and that it, we made it work still as a community.
I mean, we're not perfect. Santa Fe is still growing through its growing pains, 400 and some years into its history. Um, but I think it's important to know the history of a place like the Barrio Nalco so that you can really understand the complexity and how those dynamics worked over time and how we're still making them work so that we can still be a community that is proud of a place like that.